All right, Julie, thank you. 732 right now, an early voting milestone. More than 1 million New Yorkers have already cast their ballots in early voting, which ended yesterday. Yeah, the city now putting the finishing touches on Election Day security for when the polls reopen tomorrow. They are closed today. So this morning we're joined by Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine to talk about this and more. So, Borough President, great to have you here. Thank you, Dan and Hazel. Uh, so, have you, you know, you look at the numbers right now and more than 1 million votes already cast in New York City, which is just incredible when you look at some of these early voting. Hopefully that it helps alleviate some of the issues uh, with the long lines tomorrow. Um, how are you hearing the Board of Elections is going to handle the big day tomorrow? Mm. Actually, we have a record now because we edged out the previous record of 2020. That had been about 1.06 million, yeah. and we're even higher than that. Uh, the enthusiasm has been incredible. Last night there were lines outside of poll sites well past closing time. Yeah. I'm glad people got it out of the way, but we're going to have a big day tomorrow. Yeah. I have to say the Board of Elections has done well so far. There have been some glitches here and there, but overall, early voting was very smooth. I'm optimistic about tomorrow. Okay. And have you been working along with the NYPD because there are possible protests that could be taking place not only tomorrow, but in the days following the election? There is an officer posted at every poll site for the entire day. Generally, they don't have to intervene. That's just a precaution. So I don't expect to see problems on that tomorrow. Okay, I want to talk about some other headlines uh, in the news this morning, one that we're closely following, and that is two deadly hit-and-run crashes, right, uh, uptown over the weekend. One Saturday involving this driver that was trying to be pulled over by the NYPD. He then struck and killed a man on a bike. So then there was another one just last night, right? So, so can you talk about any progress on these cases in terms of finding those vehicles or those who were behind the wheel? Well, we are still seeing too many fatalities on the streets. And uh, increasingly, with our vehicles who do not have plates, we can track. Yeah. I don't know if that was the case in these incidents, yeah. but we're seeing a rising percentage of vehicles on the road with fake plates, with obscured plates, with cars that have devices where a screen comes down, almost James Bond style, at the push of a button in the driver's seat. Yeah. Uh, this is being used to evade accountability in red lights and um, speed cameras, also to avoid paying tolls. So we've got a major push underway to crack down on these ghost plates so that we can find these drivers when they're liable. What else can be done, though, to crack down on this? The MTA helping out at all? or? Well, first of all, the fines need to be increased. There should be points on your license. And cars should be seized or booted if they're parked on the street with no plates or fake plates. And we need to get the data. So mm. we've asked the MTA to release the data mm on the gantries that are now set up around the perimeter of what would be the congestion pricing toll mm -hmm. zone, they are actually activated. Obviously, they're not charging anybody, right. yeah. but they're collecting data. We want to know from that data what percent of the vehicles passing are ha have unreadable plates or missing plates. Oh, they can tell. They can tell from that. Yes, we sent a letter to the MTA asking for that data. We haven't heard back yet. Okay. In that one case, though, there was a police pursuit, right, which has kind of renewed this talk of whether or not police should pursue vehicles on busy streets like, like Manhattan, right? So what are your thoughts on that? Look, generally the policy is rolled back from hot pursuit because of the danger. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know exactly what the criteria yeah. is, and maybe in this case they shouldn't have done it, but uh, generally you want to avoid that because of the risk to pedestrians yeah. and other drivers. Uh, we want to switch gears now and, and talk about Jameek Maudlin in yeah. Harlem, that yeah. terribly tragic story, and just what's been done in the past and, and how the city has failed that family. Yeah. What do you think should be done now? What more should be done? What should have been done? This really? is just a heartbreaking case. A four-year-old boy who weighed 19 pounds. Mm. This is the weight of a one-year-old normally. There were uh, clear signs of abuse. And this is a child who has three older siblings who also appear to be malnourished. This wasn't a family who lacked for food. There was food in the, in the apartment. It was essentially locked away from the kids. And this is a, a household that was known to ACS going back about five years. For some reason, the case was closed in 2022. So clearly there has to be an investigation. This is a balancing act because, of course, taking custody of a children of child from the family is very serious. You only want to do it when there's a clear indication of danger and due process. But on the other hand, this can't happen. Mm -hmm. Cases like Jameek's cannot happen. There's got to be an investigation to figure out what went wrong. Yeah, should there be a, a, an investigation into ACS, you mean? Yes, and into, well, in, into this case yeah. and, and, and the ways that the system failed. Looking at a larger investigation into e ACS, the mayor has defended them, saying that it's a delicate balance, much like you just said about going in and removing a child versus letting them stay. But, you know, there's a history of issues with ACS going years 
back now? Should there be a, a look just at how many agents there are, what the caseload is, and whether or not there should be some system, sem, systemic change to the organization? Yeah. You know, there are names of children who are burned into our heads, these traffic ca tragic yeah. cases. Uh, Elisa Izquierdo, Nix Marie Brown, yeah. Samir mm -hmm. Perkins, you've covered them all here. Yeah. And in each case, there was a major reform to the system. Actually, Elisa Izquierdo's murder is what led to the creation yeah. of ACS. And this seems to be another case that would warrant a very serious look at the systems in place mm -hmm. to protect kids and to preserve due process for families. But we are, according to the most recent data, seeing the murder of nine children per year on average that are known to ACS. Mm -hmm. Clearly that number is too high. Mm -hmm. Every one of those is a human tragedy. And there's also some scrutiny now in the wake of this horrible death of uh, murder of Jameek into the question of when ACS diverts cases out of enforcement uh, and investigation mm -hmm. into a program uh, that's more focused on right. kind of voluntary support. And the details are, are not really public, so we're going off of reports that, that from insiders. I think we need to scrutinize the circumstances in which we go on an investigation route versus a, a softer, more supportive route. Yeah. Well, clearly more work needs to be done. Yes. Uh, for our president, thanks so much for Thank taking the both. time to come in. Good Appreciate it. All right. And good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Same to you. The crowds.